1988, first day at the youth camp. The, hot, uh, the weather was so hot that the leaders decided to take us to swim before the camp program even started. I was excited. I knew I'm a good swimmer. I was ready, but I was not familiar with that place. The dock was empty. My turn to go. I ran and jumped as far as I could. Head first, of course. I didn't know that further out there was much less water. At the end of the dock, there was just a little pit and I jumped over it. That spot had only 60 centimeters of water. As a result, I hit my head to the bottom of the lake hard. That 60 centimeters water was not much. It wasn't enough. I couldn't see it. That was a long journey for recovery and starting to understand the importance to see the unseen. I broke my third and fourth vertebra. The ligaments were torn. Holes were drilled into my skull. Heavy weight was pulling my head after the surgery to keep my head in place. There was nothing what was holding my head up. Even the doctor said that medicine cannot explain that I was able to survive. There was no more rush. I had time to think. I had time to dream. I had to learn to walk again at the age of 13. I was supported by an aluminum vest, which I had to wear when I started my seventh grade at school. If, if you take a close look at these pictures, isn't that so that very often we, look, we see first disabilities, and the limitations rather than abilities and possibilities. Just a few weeks before the accident, I had said to my mom, I want to become a teacher, just like my previous teacher was. He was a huge role model for me in so many ways. Let me share a short story of him. He lived about eight kilometers from my house. But I had, I had been wondering for a long time that why his car was parked nearby my, uh, my neighborhood. And years later, I heard it all. There was one girl in our class. She was going through so many difficulties. She was suffering, so was the entire family. My teacher was willing silently to go an extra mile with that person and help the entire family. This teacher had seen much more than just the surface. Probably the biggest impact in my career has been a meeting with, with, the, with the student. I was already an experienced teacher. I had been working as a class teacher, subject teacher, principal, both in public and private schools. At that time, I was working as a, princ as a principal. 
there were only few school days left before the semester ended when someone was knocking on my office door. There was this ninth grade girl with this oil painting in her hand. And I invited, please come in. Before I had the chance to say anything, she immediately started to apologize. She said, I'm so sorry that I have been such a troubled student for so many years. So before I leave this school, I would like to leave at one at least one good memory of me. So here is my painting as a gift. I became speechless. I was confused, maybe even embarrassed. But I was able to ask how you have become such an amazing painter. And you know what she said? I watched 90-minute tutorial from YouTube how to do oil painting. <laughs> I was learning a lesson of lifetime. Nine minute tutorial from YouTube. Too often, as I mentioned, we see the disabilities. Some disabilities look like this. Some or would I say many look like this, the one under. Many look like me, many look like you. What, what do we do with this information? How we interpret is that, how we see one of others, how much there is more to be discovered. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. We have heard this many times. What it means, students do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. This picture of an iceberg is a reflection what we see from others, from the appearance, from the behavior, or more like what we don't see. We often, really, really often, make wrong conclusions too fast because we don't see. There, there was an uh, Australian nurse called Bronnie Bear. She wrote a book called The Top Five Regrets of Dying. And she says that our thinking clarifies just a little before we die. And I started to think that, is there anything we could do about it? How sad is that that we start to understand things just in a few last days of our life? What could we do? I'm challenging myself and all of us to stop often enough to think which areas need clarity in our life before it's too late. Big lesson for me, before I say anything, I must listen. Before I teach, I must see. Connection must be built before content. What do we bring into the classroom or anywhere we enter? We should not create fear. It should be a place where people can fail and fail safe. We must have faith in our young generation. I had an opportunity to meet a long-distance runner, Mo Farah, at the Global Education and Skills Forum in Dubai 2018. And I asked him, how do you relate with, with all your fame and achievements? What 
what remains when all fame and achievements fade away. Mo knew exactly what I was talking about. And he said to me, you know, I, I remain because I know who I am. For him, it was clear what human dignity and worth means. He knew that his value was not based on his achievements. And this is how it should be at the schools as well. I cannot go back and undo my accident. I can definitely learn from it. As a teacher, husband and father, I must learn each day. C.S. Lewis has said something like that. You can't go back and change the beginning. But you can start where you are and change the ending. Seeing others who they truly are. Human, being, human beings with intrinsic worth and dignity is our opportunity to change the ending. Before we teach, before we correct, before we judge, can we see what is unseen? Thank you very much. Thank you.